After the FCC uh, got it net neutrality, I'm sitting in my office and my assistant comes out and says, well, you have a phone call through the front desk. I'm like, okay, well, who is it? It's your daughter. And my daughter's 16 years old. I'm like, why would Caroline be calling me through the front desk? So I'm like, hi, honey. She goes, Governor? <laughs> <laughs> she had called both our congressmen and both of our senators, she and her friend, and said, me and all my friends are so concerned about this. What are you going to do about it, the congressmen or senators? And she said the same to me, and I'm like, sorry, honey. I can't do a thing. Right, because there's some attorneys general suing, um, but this is an issue for Congress to fix. And for any of you that have 16 year old daughters, whether you're a, a governor or not, saying to her, well, you can't do a thing, doesn't really work at home. In January, I went to her high school, which is also the high school that I went to, in a classroom on January 22nd, and we signed this executive order. The order says that if internet service providers want taxpayer business in Montana, they've got to agree that they won't violate net neutrality in Montana for anyone in our state. And then we made a little template. We took out the words Montana and state of Montana and had a blank space that said insert jurisdiction. We shared that template far and wide to anybody that might listen. Now, it might be a stretch to think a 16-year-old in a small state like Montana could actually impact net neutrality. And it's a little bit of a leap when we signed that executive order. But a couple days later, a tiny state called New York signed the same executive order. And then New Jersey signed that executive order. Hawaii, Rhode Island, and Vermont. Vermont was particularly special to me because it's a Republican governor. And internet freedom at the end of the day, it isn't a partisan issue. It's an everybody issue. 